Victoria has many haunted restaurants. And one of those is the Four Mile House. My name is Jill. I've been working at Four Mile for a couple years now. And it was Halloween night. And this is one of the most eerie experiences I have. I'm almost reluctant to tell anyone about this. But uh, it was very slow that night. And there was a scotch bottle that was on the counter. And it just came up floating in midair past me and landed directly on the bar. And it was as if someone had picked it up and had gently put it there, but no one was there. My name is Sue. I worked at the uh, Four Mile for about five years. And I've encountered one experience, and that was about four years ago. I was training the boss's daughter, and I've taken three orders out here. And I was looking at this gentleman by himself, sitting at the table thinking, I gotta get to him, but I can't. It's just too many things going on. I said, Sam, could you please go to table 16? There's a single guy by himself, and I can't get to his order because I'm just too busy. She says, sure, I'll go out there. She went out there. She came back in, and she goes, and what table number was that again? And I said, table 16. She went back out there, and she came back in. She goes, and what did he look like? So I described this person, and she says, you just met Jake. I said, well, who is Jake? And she says, so he's the ghost of the four mile. The Four Mile House is one of the most historic restaurants and pubs in Victoria. It's named the Four Mile House because it's four miles from downtown Victoria. It was started in the 1850s by Peter Calvert and his wife, Elizabeth. Elizabeth Calvert became well known in the area as a healer. Her Indian women friends would come and they would trade herbs. It was in about 1980 that the Hames, Graham and Wendy bought the place. They soon discovered how haunted it was. The place was really quite a mess. It was a labor of love and sweat, according to Wendy. And one day, she was on her hands and knees, and she was almost nine months pregnant as well. And she kept saying to herself as her back ached on this hot, hot day, this had better be worth it. She'd gone over that spot so many times so she was amazed that there was something still there on the floor. It was something that definitely wasn't there only seconds before. She leaned over and picked it up. It was a five cent piece from the United States and the date was 1867. How it got there, she has no idea. But even though it was only five cents, she realized that this was an omen. It was going to be worth it after all. And so they persevered. When Wendy first came to the Four Mile House, the gardens were in a complete mess. They hadn't been looked after for a long, long time. But at one time, they had been a show place in the area. And so, without knowing anything at all about gardening, she started to work on them. She didn't really know what she was doing. But from the very beginning, she felt as though her hands were being guided by some unseen force. Perhaps the woman that she saw standing at the window on a number of occasions, the woman believed to be Elizabeth Calvert, the person who had first made the gardens the beautiful places they were. And later, the gardens did turn into a beautiful showplace again. And many people since then, coming to the parking lot, have seen a woman standing at a window, but when they look again, she's not there. My name is Andrew. I work here at the Four Mile House Pub. And um, I've heard some stories here. Um, sometimes uh, the staff, we in the kitchen, and we'd be just talking about mountains and stuff, and all of a sudden we'll just be hearing noises coming from uh, the bar area, and we'll come outside, and there's no one. It's completely empty, but there's noise. We heard noise going on. Um, it's weird. The room that is known as the tea room is a place that has at least several ghosts. And Wendy found one herself during the early days of the restaurant she was doing some waitressing. It was before opening time, so as she passed the door of the tea room, she was quite surprised that there was somebody in there. It was a man, and he was sitting at one of the tables. Her first reaction was, who is that? And she went into the room to investigate. The man was gone. But the chair was ajar where he'd been sitting only a few seconds before. 
she realized that this was probably a ghost. Perplexed, she started talking to the chef. The chef had seen someone in there as well. The chef said, let me tell you what he looks like. And detail for detail, the chef was able to describe that man. He was apparently quite a well-known apparition there in the tea room. Um, one incident that happened to me, um, I had to change some uh, things on a menu, so I decided to get some extra menus. And I went upstairs where the menus are stored. After I grabbed the menu, for some strange reason, this door swung open. And out comes this guy, which I found out later after doing uh, a, a seance, that was Jake. And he just ran by me. I mean, literally, he just ran by. He scared the bejeebies out of me. And that was my experience that I experienced from there. The other thing that happened that was completely strange was that I had two glasses together. And I could not get them apart. I tried and I tried. So I put them down. I was gone for maybe a few seconds. I came back and there they were sitting on the bar counter about at least five inches apart. It was as if something had helped me out. It was, it was, it was really strange. The employees that work here at the Four Mile Pub, um, we decided to talk to Wendy about it and uh, she decided to have a seance. Early on, they decided they would try an experiment. Wendy's family often had used a Ouija board, the homemade variety. They would put numbers and letters on pieces of paper and spread them around a table. A wine glass turned upside down, and then the wine glass does the moving, and that's exactly what happened at the Four Mile House. They made contact with a number of spirits. One of them gave his name as Jake. Jake had worked at the Four Mile House, probably as a stable boy, many, many years before. And Jake had met an untimely end. He had been murdered. However, the people that owned the place had some influence. They wanted to cover this up. And so Jake's murder never really was fully investigated. Through the Ouija board, a lot of information of a very positive nature can come forward. Well, the seances are interesting social settings because you have a group of people all gathered together deliberately to suspend their disbelief and to try to come to have contact with some disembodied spirit. And so because that's the purpose of the whole thing, they're, they're bent on interpreting any kind of, in, in quotes, information as coming from a ghost. And in some seances, people use... Uh, wine glasses or Ouija boards or whatever in the hope that the ghost or the spirit will move them. And very often this involves some contact by the humans around the table. People can unconsciously move objects or move uh, wine glasses and if you have a number of letters arranged around the table, spell out things, being quite unaware they're deliberately doing this. And they attribute the, the movement to the ghost. And so all they end up getting uh, when the words are spelled out is something they either already knew or something they've already fantasized and imagined. But because they're unaware of these movements that are being caused by they themselves, they become more convinced than ever that the ghost is real. At the four mile, there's this stained glass window of a lady wearing a beautiful white flowing dress and she's the white lady of April Point. Apparently she was a woman staying in the Four Mile House with the Calverts, and her husband was a sea captain. She would go out every day waiting for his ship to come in, and then she heard, of course, that he would never come home. He'd been lost at sea. Her ghost still returns to April Point, a small point of land jutting into Esquimalt Harbor very close to the Four Mile House. She's seen there, uh, on dark winter evenings, a white shimmering form on April Point. It's quite a sad story because this lady here over the last hundred years has been looking out to sea, waiting for her man to return home. I mean, she must have really loved him. Wendy and Graham have come to realize that the spirits of the Four Mile House are friendly. It's a place where people can dine and have a drink 
in the ambience of the 1850s and 1860s while enjoying the company of people who lived then and perhaps even earlier as well. <laughs>